Hello, I'm Judy Stiles. Thank you for joining us this week on Newsmakers. We have a special program this week featuring retiring faculty members at Missouri Southern State University. Our host this week is Missouri Southern student Terry Lynn Frazier, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Terry Lynn Frazier, and we're here today with retiring professor, associate professor of history, Norton Wheeler. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? Good, good. So you're retiring. You're leaving us. I am. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're just going to get started with some questions about what got you started, what got you interested in Missouri Southern? What sparked your interest to come teach here? Uh, there was an ad that uh, called for someone who could teach both U.S. history and Asian history, and I was looking for a full-time job. <laughs> and that was it. Well, there's probably not many people that fit that can teach U.S. and Asian history as well as you can. Well, my, my colleagues told me uh, that they had had difficulty finding someone who could really do both. So that uh, put me in a good position against uh, people half my age who were my competitors. I don't think you had any competitors in this <laughs> one. So could you discuss your area of emphasis? Well, my uh, uh, doctoral research, which eventually turned into a book, was on uh, late 19th, or excuse me, late 20th century uh, U.S.-China non-governmental exchanges. And in the course of doing that, I became uh, well-versed in modern Chinese history, as, as well as uh, a graduate study that I had done in U.S. history. So you teach U.S. and Asian history. I do. Okay. How did these interests? How did this field become interesting to you? What sparked your interest to teach these things or to learn this? You know, a couple of things. Uh, one, I think, was more latent. Uh, when I was uh, a kid, my father uh, had visitors from East Asia coming through our home on a periodic uh, annual basis. He was in the fishing tackle business, and he imported uh, fishing lures from Japan and Taiwan and Hong Kong. And, <laughs> uh, so these men, and they were all, all, almost always men, were coming through our home. But later on uh, in my, I had a business career before I taught, uh, in uh, the 1990s and on through uh, 2006, I worked for a company in Kansas, manufacturing company in Kansas City that was heavily involved uh, in China initially uh, uh, buying components for the off-road vehicles that manufactured and later uh, setting up a factory in China. And in fact, I got tapped to head up that project and spent three years there. And, but in, so in the course of uh, business involvement with China, my academic interest turned in that direction so that when I returned to graduate school in the mid-90s, uh, I fairly quickly gravitated towards studying that involved China. Was it amazing to live there? It was. It was quite an experience. Did you meet your wife there or here? Uh, I met my wife here. I, I took her there with me. <laughs> no, I <laughs> hope so. <laughs> <laughs> she had a, she, she uh, taught English at the local university, and we had a, a wonderful experience. I bet. I would love to visit there. Could you tell us about your academic career before you came to Southern? You said that you had done business. So you had gone to business school before you went back and got your degree to teach? Yeah, I've, I've been, uh, had, had a checkered uh, career. My undergraduate degree was actually uh, a BA in English from the University of Iowa in 1971. And I was originally in uh, the, the, what at Missouri Southern today we would call a BSE, secondary ed program. Um, I had a difficult classroom experience with some Iowa City, Iowa eighth graders, and uh, I joke, but it's serious, that they set my teaching career back about 25 years. My advisor said, after observing me in the classroom, you're not ready for this, are you? And I said, no, I didn't. A student light a fire in his desk, another one jump out the window. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, and um, I... Uh, I ended up uh, working several years as a welfare caseworker in Chicago, Illinois. I had a friend who did the same thing. My friend Rich, though, 
uh, used what, what we call district days, the days we went out to visit people and, uh, and worked half a day for a full day's pay, in effect. And uh, Rich spent his other half day uh, going to graduate school. I spent mine, I guess, goofing off. Uh, <laughs> he became a historian and uh, was an influence on me, and we kept in touch. So I was kind of academically engaged as an individual uh, for the next 20 years. And, I, and when the same friend uh, organized a conference commemorating the centenary of the Pullman strike of, uh, from the 1890s, I, uh, I attended, and it was a lot of fun. And I decided to go back to graduate school. and then. After I, I did that while I was working for the company that sent me to China, I uh, got my PhD a little bit after resigning from that job. And in the meantime, I taught for a year as an adjunct instructor at Morningside College in my hometown of Sioux City, Iowa, and for another year at uh, Washburn University in Topeka. And I even was exploring career opportunities in the private uh, high school system where you don't need to have certification. I ended up uh, teach as a long-term substitute teacher of Chinese at uh, one of the high school in Kansas City for a semester. But then I uh, was fortunate to get the job here and began in fall of 2008. Well, I'm so glad that those students didn't scare you off from teaching forever. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of full circle that you've yeah, come back to is. teaching. It is. So can you um, tell us some of the classes that you've taught here at Southern? Well, I've taught uh, survey classes in both uh, Asian history and U U.S. history. I've taught both halves of the U.S. survey. In Asian field within Asian history, I've taught upper division classes. Uh, South Asian history, all roughly 5,000 years of it, <laughs> and, um, and uh, e both modern and pre-modern East Asia. And then in the, in the field of U.S. history, I've taught uh, the uh, Gilded Age and Progressive Era, uh, the Age of Jefferson and Jackson. I developed a new course uh, in African American history and culture, and uh, I tentatively developed a new course in U.S. ethnic and immigration history and taught that once and just didn't, didn't get back to it. Well, you're just like a, a rich source of, of history. Well, I, you know, I enjoy developing new syllabi because it stretches me and forces me to uh, do some rereading and some new reading, and it's fun and it's an intellectual challenge. Uh, it's also time consuming. Yes. Well, some students like me love history, but some students don't. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with students like that who you've come across who really aren't focused on your field of interest, but yet you want them to be? Well, I, t I uh, use uh, multiple teaching methodologies and teaching sources and hope that something will reach uh, everybody. Uh, you know, on exam day, I, not uniquely, I combine multiple choice and essay questions. But uh, on the other days, I, I intersperse, uh, uh, so you, in most of my classes, uh, and definitely in my surveys, uh, historically themed feature films, and then give students an assignment where they uh, relate the historical content of the films back to the material they've read. Uh, I, in some, in some classes, I make extensive use of uh, visual representations of historical events. This semester in my Age of Jefferson Jackson class, uh, every week or so I hang a new print on the, on the wall from a cartoon about Jackson and the Bank War to uh, <laughs> portraits of uh, Jane K. Polk and his wife to uh, artistic depiction of uh, Nat Turner's Rebellion. And, uh, so you like to pr bring some lightness to it, yeah. keep a little humor with it. Well, I, sometimes that too. Yeah. <laughs> well, it helps, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm very curious about if you can share a story with me of a student that's been particularly successful and that you're proud of. I mean, you know, I've really had a lot of uh, 
students that, that I'm proud of. I remember one uh, who, what was something I did one semester was stage a uh, courtroom trial of uh, Anne Hutchinson, the uh, uh, Puritan uh, woman preacher who got in trouble, uh, historians think, for being a woman, although she was charged with uh, the heresy of prophecy. And uh, this young man, Tristram, uh, just took on the role of uh, judge in the courtroom and, w and w was great. And he's, uh, he went on I think, to get a degree in either political science or international relations. Another student I ran into just the other day in the library uh, uh, told me that uh, he, he had took my U.S. survey also, that he really developed an enthusiasm about history. And he, he kind of connected with me because he's also headed toward a career in international business, uh, but uh, informed by you know, his reading of history. Well, that's got to make you feel great, yeah. knowing that you touched some lives along the way. A few. A few. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're being modest. Mm. So can you tell me like a, 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 a great memory you have from Southern, from your time here? Mm. <laughs> Maybe how Southern's changed since you've been here? Yeah. Um, you know, I I really like the direction uh, where we we seem to be headed these last couple of years with the with the new president, and I'll tell you just a, this maybe this w without being a, a direct answer to your question, we'll, we'll get you there. But I I find teaching at Missouri Southern really gratifying. The first couple of years I was here, I uh, would ask the students in my sur in every survey class how many of them were the first in their family to attend college, and mm -hmm. two-thirds of the hands would go up consistently. And I hadn't done that for several years, and uh, the other day I asked in one of my classes, and, and it was I thought, well, maybe, you know, maybe the percentage will go down a little because we're a little further into the future. It's still about two-thirds, and um, I, I think uh, that, that that makes a, an experience at a university like Missouri Southern particularly gratifying, that students, are, I, I think, appreciate the opportunity they have. I really love looking into the faces of the parents at commencement and seeing the pride that they have. Well, I bet, I bet. I know that I'm a first-year student myself, so it's, it's important for me to finish and graduate. Mm -hmm. I'm, finally, I'm pretty curious about what you're going to be doing for retirement. What are your plans? Mm -hmm. Oh, I've got, I'm going to have to give myself a daily schedule. <laughs> you I, plan to be busy. Yeah, you know, I started this career late in my, you know, I think in my 50s, I think I was 58 maybe when I, when I started here. And I thought I would teach well into my 70s, like my colleague Dr. Uh, Gubera, who says he's going to maybe hang it up at 50 years here at Missouri <laughs> Southern. Um, but I have uh, several research projects that I'm interested in working on, but I just have not had time to uh, give them my full attention because I put uh, you know a lot of time into preparing for the classroom. So I got several research projects, probably 20 years worth, really. Oh goodness! I have been carrying a clarinet around for 30 years since I suspended my first few months of lessons. <laughs> I. Uh, want to spend about two hours a day studying Chinese, and I, ha I haven't had much time lately. Uh, I will be do my wife and I are moving to Chattanooga. We've bought a home there, southern, southeastern Tennessee. I love and Chattanooga, Tennessee. Have you been there? Yeah, the yeah. Chattanooga Choo Choo is one of my favorite spots. Yeah, yeah. It's an old haunt of mine. It's a great town, mm. and, and not too expensive. Um, and uh, so I'm going to be do, do some volunteer work with uh, youth uh, in the city there. Well, yeah. thank you for joining us today. Well, you're welcome. Thank you. It's been really fun to have you. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. Hi, we're here today with retiring professor of mathematics, Laura Atkins. How are you today? I'm very well. How are you? I'm doing really good. So we're going to jump in. Okay. I've got a few questions. I'm curious, 
When did you start at Missouri Southern and what sparked your interest to come here? Good questions both. Um, I was a student here. I graduated from Missouri Southern in the 1970s. I know that sort of dates me. <laughs> and an opening came in January of 1980 and I applied and was blessed with getting the position. Very good. It's like kind of coming home for you. It very much was. Well, I, uh, I'd like you to discuss your areas of emphasis. Okay. Um, throughout the course of my career here, I've taught a lot of different math uh, classes, and um, each one has nice things about it. My emphasis is mostly in teaching teachers how to enjoy math more and to feel more confidence in teaching it. Well, that's a definite necessity, because not everybody can learn math very well. So how did you become interested in math? That's something I'm, I'm really curious about, because something sparked your young little girl mind to love numbers, <laughs> so I'm curious. Yeah, growing up in the 50s, it was a little unusual. My, well, my dad was a rocket scientist. He uh, was on the Werner von Braun rocket team back in the 50s, and um, so I needed to follow in those footsteps. Big footsteps to follow. And then my mom came back after being a housewife. She came back as one of the first non-traditional students to Missouri Southern and a very bright lady but struggled with math mm -hmm. and she had a lot of anxiety issues with math only mm -hmm. and a very confident person otherwise and I I got to tutor her at a pretty young age and I thought then I think this should be my calling that's kind of amazing yeah. you got to help your mom I love yeah. that so could you tell us about what okay um, what classes have you taught here at Southern recently um, most recently, I teach um, geometry for teachers, um, another a class that's specifically for elementary teachers. It's uh, a little algebra, a little set theory, a little um, ancient number systems type. It's called Math 119. And I teach uh, Education 312, which is um, how to teach arithmetic in the early grades, how to teach pre-K through grade six. And I also teach the secondary methods class for middle school through high school on how to teach math. Very fascinating. Do you seem to get a lot of response out of these classes? Are they always full? They're always, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty blessed that they're full usually. And um, it's just great. It, I've seen so much growth in so many students um, that they share with me. And they share it with me for years after. I'll get emails and phone calls saying, I get it. I'm so happy, you know, that I understand how to make it a better world for my students mathematically than it was for me when that's I was funny. a child. And that's, that's great. That, it's great because you know that more kids are going to enjoy it than enjoyed it, say, when I was in school. Well, that's going to make you feel pretty good. It does. Makes, make, makes me feel really good. Can you share some of your memories uh, from how Southern has changed from when you were a student here as well as when you started to now? Wow. <laughs> That's a big one. <laughs> it was a very young campus when I started out here and um, in 1971 and we had the Oval and that was just about it. We had the main buildings there that are still here of course and um, Leon Billingsley was the president and he in fact is who hired me so I've been here through all the presidents um, in position and so that's been interesting to yeah. see that. <laughs> um, I was pretty young when I started obviously and not much younger than the students and so now I'm much older than the students and it but the relationship has not changed a lot. I, I really love what I do. Well, this is a campus with a lot of non-traditional students, so yes. that might help a little bit. Yes. It helps for people who are late coming back to take math. You c they can relate right. well to you. Well, thank you. I think, I think it does help. I think so. I relate better to professors who are more my age, and I'm a non-traditional oh, student. Oh, thank you for the compliment. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I could be your mom. Oh, stop <laughs> it. We could be sisters. <laughs> oh, you're, you're charming. <laughs> oh, can you tell us about working with students who aren't really interested in math and are having a hard time with it? How do you get around that? How do you get them to embrace the field of math? I think that's the biggest challenge that everybody in the math department faces, all my colleagues who are all fabulous. Um, we, it's different, of course, for each student, yes. but they do share 
common areas of anxiety or unpreparedness or lack of background. And as I teach my students who are going out to teach, if you can communicate, if they know that you care mm -hmm. and they can feel free to communicate with you about what they don't get, I think that's the biggest thing, to be available to them and to let them know that they're important to you and also to let them know how much importance math has and increasingly so as technology advances. Math is kind of a gatekeeper for a lot of students. They have to shut down a major that they thought they wanted mm -hmm. because they were afraid to take the math and that's sad. It is sad. Well math is very daunting. For a lot of people it really is. Do you find that for some of the students you have to walk them back through some of the building block steps to get to where they are where they can start learning again? Oh yes mm -hmm. and we have a couple of good beginning courses here that help them build their confidence and uh, develop a foundation for what they're going to need for the more advanced classes. Do you think the My Math Lab helps? I think it does. I have only used it one time mm -hmm. because I um, only used it when I taught beginning algebra. I see. And I haven't taught that for a long time. Uh, but I do think it helps because it helps both the student and the professor know literally what page they're on, uh, right. what they're doing and what they haven't looked at. And I, I think it's a helpful thing. Well, it definitely helped me pass my math class. Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you share a story of one of your successful students or of, of some successful students that you've encountered that you're really proud of? Uh, well, I would like to give a shout out to all of my um, students, of course, over the many <laughs> years. But uh, one of the things I'm most proud of are the students who have worked, we developed with um, uh, East Middle School, a practicum where the students, we were the first to do this uh, in the state and um, where the students go out and help tutor and help co-teach and the, every semester I have them write me an anonymous paragraph about what they liked about the experience, what they didn't like about the experience and almost a hundred percent of them say it really helps me get the math better and it helps me understand why when I'm teaching I can't skip things that I was formerly afraid to teach or not confident enough to teach and that partnership has been amazing and I'm proud of really proud of that. Well it's got your name written all over it I mean oh. you definitely your the teaching of the teachers because that's important for me as a child growing up I think that's where I lacked I didn't have teachers who taught fun or taught where where us girls mm -hmm. got it. Oh that that's been a huge struggle both in math and science ever since I was a little girl. Mm -hmm. I mean we were discouraged actually from going into math oh, when yeah. I was in high school because I remember a counselor saying you don't want the boys to think you're smarter than they are. <laughs> <And> <laughs> the boy I ended up with is a math teacher here too so it all ended up pretty well. <laughs> well we won't let him know that you're smarter than him. <laughs> Such is not the case. Oh goodness, that's <laughs> good. So um, what, is, what do you remember most about your time here at Southern? What's one of your favorite antidotes or rich stories from your time here? Oh, there are so many. Let, let me think about that for a <laughs> minute. Um, I guess just a lot of the times that the, the students come into the office a lot mm -hmm. and you develop relationships with them which are professional but they're also friendships, the beginning of friendships that last through time. Um, Al Cade was a very dear friend of mine and as you know he passed recently mm -hmm. and I saw a lot of my ex-students at his services and it was it was so touching you know what legacy he has left and I think all of us as teachers hope that it's ripples. You know, we influence the next generation of teachers who influence the next generation, and we hope that that just continues. And I think that, and the relationship I've had with my colleagues, I've been blessed to have many, many good friends here. Well, you've been here a while. I was looking, <laughs> I, I researched you, and I pulled uh -oh. up your Vita. Uh oh. <laughs> and it is so long. You have so much academic history under your belt. You've just done so much and won so many awards. Can you tell us about a couple of the awards you've won while you were here? Um, well, I was honored to win Outstanding Teacher. That meant a lot because <laughs> uh, the students 
were the ones who nominated me. So I was very, very pleased to get that. Yeah. And um, um, I won a most courteous and uh, helpful uh, award by the chart, which was a really nice thing too. <laughs> and there have been other things, but those two spring quickly to mind. Well, I got to say, as a student who has struggles with math, and I still have a year to go here, I'm very sad to see you leaving. Oh, I wish I had found you before you oh, retired. You're too sweet. <laughs> I'm just curious now. What are you going to do with your retirement? Oh, that's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm going to stay and teach two classes a semester for a while, and I think, uh, you know, old teachers, it's hard to give it up. Yeah. And I'll still be teaching the teachers, and that'll be fun. And we have. Um, six grandkids who are seven and under and our kids live close and they do and um, my husband's a lot of fun so well the grandkids are going to keep you busy i think so i think so but you know here's a tip i learned women who watch their grandchildren tend mm -hmm. to not get alzheimer's excellent so there you go excellent <laughs> well i get that blessing often so that's that's great that i'm is, glad to so know do you have that. any beach plans or any <laughs> trips tr planned to, to take now that you're going to be retired i think we will i think we will travel i think it'll be a lot of fun is your husband still working he is he still teaches two classes here and, and here here mm -hmm. and he's not planning on retiring yet. well i think never but he, <laughs> he tells me he he is semi-retired as well um, but he tells me when I hang it up, he will too, but we'll just take it a little bit at a time. <laughs> well, I'm curious also um, what your favorite moment at being at Southern was. What's the one highlight of your time here? Oh, goodness, we're going to have some dead air space. Let me think <laughs> about that for a minute. My favorite moment. I don't think I can pick one favorite. I think I have a hundred favorite moments. A hundred favorite I moments? I think I do. So what, what about your background brought you to, okay, you, you're into math, you've mm -hmm. decided you're going to focus on math. Mm -hmm. Was it hard for you to get into that field in the 70s, you know, when you decided to go into math? Did you find a lot of balking at that, a lot of people unex, unexpecting you to follow in, um, in math? Actually, I think I hit it at a good time because mm -hmm. they were actually looking for more diversity in um, <clears throat> the classrooms, specifically the math and science classrooms. And so I think it was almost a bonus for me that I was female and am. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> was I am? Yeah, was am. <laughs> I, th I think it was um, helpful. Well, good. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you me. so much. I loved having you here. I, well, I have so enjoyed it. And her birthday is Sunday. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us this week on Newsmakers. I hope you can join us again next week.